Hello, and welcome to this first lecture from the Edicor University course on Spark 2014. During this lecture, you will be provided with a slide section that provides an overview of the Spark 2014 technology and toolset, and then you will be assessed on your learning using some quiz questions. Spark 2014 refers to two different things. A programming language, targeted at functional specification and static verification, plus a set of development and verification tools. The Spark 2014 language is based on a subset of the Ada language, which is particularly suited to formal verification as it is designed for critical software development. Ada 2012 introduced the use of aspects that can be used for subprogram contracts, and Spark 2014 added its own aspects in order to aid static analysis. We shall start by reviewing static verification of the programs, meaning the verification of the source code directly without compiling or executing it. This verification involves tools that perform static analysis, and this in general can take various forms. It includes, for example, type checking and visibility rules enforcement as done by the compiler, as well as more complex reasoning such as abstract interpretation. Tools perform two different forms of static analysis. The first one is called flow analysis and in general it is the fastest form of analysis and it checks in particular initialization of variables and data dependencies between inputs and outputs of subprograms. It can also find unused assignments and unmodified variables. The second one is called formal proof and it checks in particular the absence of runtime errors in program execution as well as conformance with Ada 2012 contracts. The tool for formal verification of the Spark 2014 language is called Gnat Proof. It checks from conformance with the Spark subset and performs flow analysis and functional verification of the source code. The Spark 2014 language is also supported by several other tools. In particular, it is fully supported by the Gnat compiler and the GPS integrated development environment. We will now look at a simple example of an Ada 2012 subprogram that has also used Spark 2014 aspects to specify a verifiable subprogram contract. The subprogram called increment adds one to the value of its parameter named x. Several properties can be specified on this subprogram using the shown contract. The Spark 2014 global aspect specifies that increment does not read and does not write any global variables. The Spark 2014 depend aspect is especially interesting for the security of this subprogram as it specifies that the value of the parameter x after the call only depends on the value of x before the call. Functional properties of increment are specified using the pre and post aspects of Ada 2012 increment can only be called if the value of x before the call is smaller than integer tick last. It is necessary to ensure that the addition operation performed in the subprogram body will also not overflow. Finally, we specify that increment does indeed perform an increment of x, that is, the value of x after a call is one more than its value before the call. The Spark 2014 verification tools can verify all of these contracts. It additionally makes sure that no error is raised at runtime when executing increments body. At this point it helps to understand the rationale behind the differences between Spark and Ada languages. The aim while designing the Spark subset of Ada was to create the biggest possible subset still amenable to easy specification and sound verification. The most notable exclusions include access types and allocators, as well as the handling of exceptions which are both known to increase considerably the amount of required user written annotations. Go to statements and controlled types are also unsupported as they introduce non trivial control flow. The two remaining restrictions are side effects and expressions and the aliasing of names, which we will now look at in more detail. Spark language does not support side effects in expressions, 
That is, evaluating a spark expression cannot update any object. This limitation is necessary to avoid unpredictable behavior, depending on the order of evaluation, parameter passing mechanism, or compiler optimizations. The expression shown here, involving G, is non-deterministic due to the order in which the two calls to F are evaluated, and is therefore not legal spark. To aid in the static verification of expressions, and because function calls are themselves expressions, they must also be freed of side effects. Potential side effects of a function include updates to its parameters and global variables. As a consequence, Spark forbids subprograms that are functions with out or in out parameters, like the function f shown here, as well as up functions updating global variables. In most fun cases, these functions can easily be replaced by procedures. When it has access to the subprogram body, the Spark tool verifies that subprograms which are functions are indeed free from side effects. Here, for example, the two functions incra and incra and log have the same signature. However, incra is valid Spark, while incra and log is not, as it attempts to update the global variable call count. Another restriction imposed in the Spark subset concerns aliasing. We say that two names are aliased if they refer to the same object. Since access types are not allowed in Spark, aliasing can only occur as part of the parameter passing in a procedure call. As a consequence, when a procedure is called, Spark makes sure that no out or in out parameter is aliased with either another parameter of the procedure or a global variable updated in the procedure's body. There are two reasons to forbid aliasing in Spark. First, it makes verification more difficult as it requires taking into account the fact that updates to two variables with different names may in fact update the same object. Then, results may seem unexpected from a user's point of view. Indeed, when its parameters are aliased, the results of a subprogram call may depend on compiler-specific treatment like parameter passing mechanisms. What is more, most of the time, possibility of aliasing was not taken into account by the programmer. The example subprogram, move to total shown here, increases the global variable total of the value of its input parameter source. It then resets source to zero. Here, the programmer has not taken into account the possibility of an aliasing between total and source. This is fairly common practice. This subprogram is valid Spark and for its verification, the Spark 2004 tool team tools assume, like the programmer, non-aliasing between total and source. To ensure that this assumption is correct, the tool will then check for non-aliasing on every call to move to total. The Spark language has been restricted to only allow easily specifiable and verifiable constructs. However, sometimes a user cannot or does not want to abide by these limitations on all of their code base. Therefore, the Spark tools only check conformance to the Spark subset on code which is identified as being in Spark. This can be done using an aspect named Spark underscore mode. If not explicitly specified, Spark mode is off, which means the code is in full ADA. This default can be changed using a configuration pragma also. To allow easy reuse of existing ADA libraries, entities declared in with units with no explicit Spark mode can still be used from Spark code. The tool will only check for Spark conformance on the declaration of those which are effectively used within the Spark code. Here is a common case of use of the Spark mode aspect. The package shown here, P, only defines entities whose specification are in the Spark subset. However, it uses full ADA features in its body, which therefore should not be analyzed, and has the Spark mode aspect set to off. Spark mode can be specified in a fine-grained manner on a per-unit basis. More precisely, 
a package has four different parts, the visible part and private parts of its specification, as well as the declarative and statement part of its body. On each of these parts, spark mode can be specified as either on or off. In the same way, a subprogram has two parts, its specification and its body. A general rule in Spark is that when Spark mode has been set to off, it can never be switched to on again. This presents, prevents both setting Spark mode to on on subunits of a unit with Spark mode off, and switching back to Spark mode on on a part of a given unit when a previous part has been set to off. We've now reached the end of the slide section of this lecture. You should now have enough knowledge of this subject to complete a small quiz with questions designed to test your understanding. Each question is marked and you will have a chance to review your score at the end of the lecture. Good luck. Here is the correct answer. Click anywhere on the slide to continue to the next quiz question. Here is the correct answer. Click anywhere on the slide to continue to the next quiz question. Here is the correct answer. Click anywhere on the slide to continue to the next quiz question. Here is the correct answer. Click anywhere on the slide to continue to the next quiz question. Here is the correct answer. Click anywhere on the slide to continue to the next quiz question. Here is the correct answer. Click anywhere on the slide to continue to the next quiz question. Here is the correct answer. Click anywhere on the slide to continue to the next quiz question. Here is the correct answer. Click anywhere on the slide to continue to the next quiz question. Here is the correct answer. Click anywhere on the slide to continue to the next quiz question. Here is the correct answer. Click anywhere on the slide to continue to the next quiz question. Thank you for attending this lecture from the Ada Core University. I hope you have found it a valuable step in learning the Ada programming language and that you continue on to complete lectures from all the available courses. Thank you.